Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're going to take a look at how we can solve a quadratic equation using the zero product property. So let's go ahead and jump right into an example problem where we're given a quadratic equation, y equals 3x squared plus 14x minus 5, and we want to determine what the x-intercepts are. Remember, a quadratic function is a graph for a parabola. Remember, a parabola is a U-shaped graph. It's not a line. It's either a U that's facing up or it's a U that's facing down. And when we solve a quadratic equation, we're actually finding out where does that parabola cross the x-axis. And one of the ways that we can solve this is by using the zero product property. Now, before we can even jump into the zero product property, first we have to factor that quadratic there. And to factor it, we have a lot of different methods that we can use. For me, I'm going to use the box and diamond method, or sometimes we refer to it as the generic rectangle and diamond method. I'm going to use that right now so we can factor this quadratic and then use the zero product property. So if I'm trying to factor this quadratic equation, I'm going to need to draw a generic rectangle and a diamond problem right next to it so that I can factor this equation. Remember when we use the box and diamond method, the x squared term always goes in the bottom left corner. So I'm gonna put three x squared down here in the bottom left corner. The constant goes in the top right. So negative five is gonna go here. And then I multiply that diagonal, three x squared times the negative five to create the top part of my diamond problem. Well, three x squared times negative five is gonna create negative 15 x squared. So I know that these two numbers that I'm trying to find on both sides of the diamond problem, they're going to need to multiply to make negative 15x. And more importantly for us, they're going to need to add to 14x. So now's the point where we want to think about what two factors multiply to negative 15x squared and add to 14x. Well, if I'm trying to think of what factors multiply to 15, I either can use one in 15 or three in five. And I think I might wanna use one in 15 here because if I use one X and 15 X, I definitely can make one of those negative so that I can add to a, make a positive 14. I need to multiply these two so that they end up negative. So one of those factors has to be negative in order for the product to be negative. So I think if I make the one X negative, I'll satisfy the top part of this diamond problem. 15 times negative one X will make negative 15 X squared. And then 15 plus negative one X is gonna give me 14 X. So I know that those are the two factors that I need to complete that box problem over there. So now I move those two pieces into my generic rectangle it doesn't matter where you put them when those two remaining spots, as long as they are in there and it satisfied that diamond problem. The last step that I have to do now is just find out what are the dimensions for that generic rectangle. Well, to get 3x squared, I'm gonna have to multiply 3x and x. And if I have those two pieces there, to fill out this top left part, I know I'm gonna multiply x times something to get negative one X and X times, I think negative one is what's gonna give me that negative one variable. So I'm gonna write that there as negative one. The last final piece down here, I know three X is gonna be multiplying by something to make 15 X. And I believe three X times positive five is gonna give us 15 X's. And if you're unsure whether or not those two numbers are correct, you can always check the last box here. Negative one times five is going to give us negative five. So we know that those are the two factors for this quadratic. And now we can write this equation in factored form. We can write it as three X minus one times the quantity X plus five. And we have now factored this quadratic using the box and diamond method. Now, this is what we know how to do. Hopefully we know how to do this and to factor a quadratic to get it into factored or product form. But now we wanna use this, 
this result so that we can determine what our x-intercepts are. This is where the zero product property comes into play. Once we have that factored form over there, we can now use that to help us determine where that parabola is going to cross the x-axis. So let's go ahead and see how we're gonna use that. I'm gonna rewrite this equation over here to the right, y equals 3x minus one times the quantity x plus five. And to use the zero product property, what I have to do is I need to change the y to become a zero. The reason why we're doing this is we're trying to find x-intercepts. And when you have an x-intercept for a graph, think about the coordinate point that you end up with. With x-intercepts, the y variable is always a zero term. Because if we're looking at an x-intercept, it doesn't have any y value. It's not going up, it's not going down. The x-intercept is always on that x-axis where y is zero. So that's how I know I need to make the y equal to zero. Now the zero product property tells us that I have these two factors here, 3x minus one and x plus five. I know I'm multiplying those two factors and they both equal zero. So think about it this way. If I had told you that I had two numbers here, let's say x and y, and I know that when I multiplied those two numbers, the answer ended up being zero. Well, then you know then that either x or y has to be zero, right? Because the only way you can multiply two numbers and end up with zero is that one of those numbers has to be zero. That's the zero product property. If you multiply two numbers together and your product is zero, one of your numbers has to be zero. Using that fact, I now know that either 3x minus one equals zero or x plus five equals zero. So the zero product property tells me then that I can split these two factors into two separate equations where they are both equal to zero because I know one of those has to be equal to zero in order for their product to be zero. Now I have two equations, both equal to zero, both with a single x variable. We can solve this for x to determine what our x-intercepts are. I'm gonna go ahead and solve the one on the left first. I want x by itself, so I'm gonna add one to both sides. The ones on the right side, zero out. I'm left with a positive one equaling three x. I want x by itself. So let's divide by the coefficient of three on both sides. Those threes cancel out to a one on the right side. I'm left with x equals one divided by three, which is one third. That right there is one of the x-intercepts for that quadratic equation. I know if I look at a graph and I see that graph there of that equation, that uh, parabola is gonna be crossing the x-axis at one third. Now it's gonna cross at another point, and that other point is gonna be right here. We wanna get x by itself for this second equation, so I'll go ahead and subtract that five over to the left side. By doing so, I end up with x all by itself on the right side, and it equals zero minus five, which is negative five. That is how we use the zero product property to help us solve for our two x-intercepts for that equation. I know now that y equals 3x squared plus 14x minus five, the first equation we started with. I know that those are the two x-intercepts. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.